Hello, I am Dr. Aburaz. Welcome to the Advanced Diagnostics for Dental Hygiene Practice. This is an introduction for Unit 1. Unit 1 is on the limitations of conventional endodontic, periodontic, and restorative diagnostic tests. In this unit, we will have few objectives. Perhaps one of the most important objectives is to review the report of the Swedish Council on Health Technology Assessment regarding endodontic diagnosis and treatment planning. In Unit 1, we go over the limitations of traditional diagnostic tests. For example, in Indo, we have seven tests. Now, many of these tests are not valid, are not evidence-based. The unit describes the mechanism of sensation and covers the Brandenstrom theory for dentinal sensitivity. It is essential for you to understand the mechanism of pulpal sensibility. Another very important area is the technical and biological limitations of radiology, both intraoral and extraoral. In endodontics, periodontics, and restorative dentistry, the worst radiograph to use is the OPG. It's very limited in its accuracy. There are many issues that influence the radiographic appearance, what we see on the periabic radiograph or the OPG or the bitwin. The unit goes in details about the limitations of periabic radiography. Huge lesions could develop in the maxillary sinus and does not show radiographically. Trabecular bone lesions do not show as well. Furthermore, the buccolingual defects do not show. We only see the mesials. All of these factors are limitations discussed in Unit 1. So when it comes to research evidence, clinical outcomes, patient satisfaction and practice management, the best practice in endodontic diagnostics are the 4R operational diagnosis protocol. The only test we use is the cold pulp test. We do not use heat. We do not use electricity. The periapical radiograph, we always use them with zero horizontal angulation. And we could change to a 20 degrees angulation only when we have a need for a posterior endodontically treated teeth or if you like to separate the roots. Bitewink radiographs are excellent for interproximal caries detection. Bitewink radiographs are excellent for alveolar bone crest imaging. The CBCT is excellent for substandard endodontic problem whenever you have pathology. And CBCT is excellent before surgical endodontics. In periodontics, we use interoral radiology, specifically periapical and bite wing. We go through the plaque index, pocket depth index, clinical attachment level, bleeding on probing, and Miller mobility index. The unit focuses on one area which I believe is very important, and that is periodontal probing. In details, it goes over the inherent errors in periodontal probing. It specifically focuses on cemento enamel junction is not a reliable reference for measurement of clinical attachment level. Basically, when you have a swelling or you have restorations or you have a problem such as abrasion, all of this interfere in the periodontal probing. More specifically, there are also inherited error in the force applied in the periodontal probing. Obstruction by subgingival calculus, the crown contour, the root anatomy, pain provoked by probing, and the patient discomfort. In 1979, the NIDCR offered a grant to develop and test an electronic probing instrument to replace the old method of probing. These guidelines were actually met with the computer-aided periodontal probing, which is also known as the Florida probe. One of the main reasons where I advocate the Florida probe is the computer-generated periodontal chart. In the unit, we discuss that in details. So when it comes to research evidence, clinical outcome, patient satisfaction, and practice management, the best practices in periodontic diagnostics are the plaque index, gingival index, pocket probing depth with computer-aided periodontal probing, and of course, the Miller Mobility Index. The last area we cover in Unit 1 
is the restorative diagnostic tests, the RIGI restoration evaluation criteria, the marginal integrity, the surface texture, and the quality of the restorations, the anatomy contour, and the effect of contour on the tissue, the marginal discoloration of the restorations, the fractures, and the secondary caries formations. We focus on the marginal integrity and coronal microleakage, extremely important area in the diagnostics, restorative diagnostics, pulpal diagnostics, and endodontic diagnostics. Here you see now, when you have a restoration marginal discoloration, this discoloration indicate a possibility of leakage, recurrent caries, and that will have an endodontic, restorative, pulpal, and periodontal implications. The dental hygienist must know about this criteria. So when it comes to research evidence, clinical outcomes, patient satisfaction, and practice management, the best practices in restorative diagnostics are sharp explorers for T microns tips, magnification loops, digital dental photography, and intraoral cameras. Unit number one will give you more information on the subject. Thank you for listening.